back to her old self, which is nice. All day get along. No. Lord God, then, Father, I just thank you for this time together, Lord God. That we're here together as a family, Lord, and not in the hospital no more. Lord God, we're in the realms of healing, Lord, yet it's coming the day a brand new body. Never need of the medical attention again, Lord, but to then, may we witness to the loss and help grow the Christians. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Gospel of John. Gospel of John. We're in verse 13. Oh, wow. Moving right along. At a rate that the Lord takes us. Amen. And then we'll, do, we'll start in chapter 1, verse 1. We'll read down. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since the last time we were here. Yeah, a little over a month. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. You know, you take that verse there, well, what about the automobile? God didn't make an automobile, but there it is. And if you take all the molecules, all the, the, the ore of metals and the plastic, that God made all that. God didn't make a telephone, but everything that made a telephone, God made. Man was just used the resources. In him was life. And the light was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, the bear witness of the light, capital L. And all men through him might believe. So see, there's that free will. All men might believe. It's, it's your choice. It's never put upon you. He was not that light, John but was sent to bear witness of that light, it's Jesus. That was the true light which lighteth every man in the, that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. When all the great studies we've done so far, he came unto his own, his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And we dwelt on this verse a while. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. So here we are. So, it says not of men. So what is the attitude of man to Jesus? Chapter 7, verse 7. If man would come up with a with a Jesus, and I'm going to call it religion, because religion is man-made. Man would come up with a God that would be filled a store. And you could walk into that store and say, well, I want a God that, wants, that allows me to, to drink alcohol. I will want a God that will allow me to have pornography. I will want a God that, that likes tobacco. I would like a God that would go with my sins. That's religion. That's man bargain shopping for a God. And that's not the holy and righteous God of the Bible. So when we look at John 7:7, 7, 7, the world cannot hate you. Talking to the disciples. But me it hated. Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. So, when we look at the world and mankind, and notice how it says man, it doesn't say dogs, it doesn't say whales, it doesn't say platypuses, it doesn't say manatees. Those cannot be saved. Those do not have a regard to God. And the Bible says that Jesus, His words are, a Christian. It's not you that, that the world hates. It's me, Jesus, and people say, oh, doesn't Jesus love everybody? Doesn't the world just love Jesus? Absolutely not. Because Jesus will walk up to your face and say, that's a sin. you got to put it under the blood. No, I don't take no payments. I don't take no water. I don't take no attendance. I don't take no works. It is upon the cross of Jesus, the same one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
And man don't want that. If man were to get saved by how he wants to be saved, he would not be happy in heaven. The Muslims believe they have virgins waiting for them. The Catholics believe they have their universal Catholic religion with everything of the Pope and minus the Bible. The Mormons believe that they will have fantasies and governing planets and making babies. That's not the Bible. The end for the Christian is worshiping and praising the one Jesus Christ who suffered and died on the cross. If you don't want Jesus today, you're not going to want him in glory forever. Hell is just a great place for you. Because there is no Jesus, there is no Bible, there's no God, there's no holiness. And then there's no sin, there's no wickedness, there's no violence in hell. For them to enjoy. Chapter 15, verse 18, John. And when you witness to somebody, you go out and tell people about Jesus. However you do it. I don't care if you just hand somebody a gospel jack, do you go forth preaching or go knocking on their door and interrupt their meal. Whatever you do, you will come upon, if you keep fishing, you keep preaching, you keep spreading the seed out there, you will come upon somebody who will not have any regard to what you're doing, and they will rightfully and knowingly tell you how you are wrong. And then you will have some religion people who have the dare to come up to you and say, that's not what Jesus would do. You're not going to please everybody being a Christian. And it says, marvel not the world hates you. In John chapter 15, verse 18, if the world hates you, all right, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. So if you're a Christian, you're going to live right, you're going to do right, don't be surprised if you become the object of the scorn, you become the object of hatred, you become the object of, of, of something wrong with that person amongst your family. He's a weirdo. He's not in the cult. How much he's changed. You don't do this with us no more. We don't want to have anything to do with you. And that goes good with, with your co-workers and your job. Not everybody loves Jesus. And if you do what Jesus tries to tell you to do, and you, you achieve that, what the Bible says, and we don't do it 100%, Christ did it 100%. Listen, Jesus fed twice the multitude. I believe it was 5,000, 4,000. A man had leprosy. He healed the leprosy. He gave a man a hand that was withered up. He gave the ability to use that hand again. Man is laying on his bed and he's sick and Jesus rose him from the grave. Tracy lied in the hospital for a month and we're praying over her and we did all we could do to the Lord and say thank you Lord that now she's up, she's with us, Amen. she's joined with us, she, she, she loves the Lord and there'll be people who, who in, the, in, that, in the hospital like, well, what, what gives her, what gives her an idea? Like, Why didn't God get that to her? Man is not a preacher of God. Somebody got angry because she was a Christian, led the Lord right, passed out gospel tracts, and she walked out of that hospital still praising God. Amen. Now the world would expect her, her family, her friends would expect her to come out of that hospital angry with God, flipping herself off to God and say, God, you know, that's what kind of Christian life it is, I'm going to walk away. And when you read Pilgrim's Progress, that was, um, what was his name the slough of his fawn. Where they end up in the slough of his I forget his name, but he turned back and went back home. Pliable. What? Pliable. Pliable. Oh, pliable. They grew to have a family that helps you up. He got in that mess. Very early on, he got in that mess. God, this is the kind of mess you're going to have for us. I'm, I'm going back. Hmm. And then when he went back, what's the, what? I was going to say what the Bible said. What does the book tell you? They hated him. Yeah. Call them a turn back. Turn back. Yep. I mean, you didn't do what fully. So once you enter the realm of Christianity, they're going to hate you because you are Christ. You are a new creature. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. You're not ever going to make the world happy. You can give them all the Tootsie Rolls that you can give them, and then they're going to want another candy bar. Mm. And when you give them that candy bar, you can give them banana splits, and that's not going to be happy. But the, what Jesus said here is, marvel not to hate they hate me. 
the sinless perfected one that helped and, and gave to the world all that he had of God and they hated him. Kind of interesting. 1 John 3, 13. 1 John is the same writer of the Gospel of John. And I, I think with Rachel and Tracy that they have been in the ministry long enough to say, you know what? The Bible is correct. And when somebody comes up to me, 1 John 3.13, that's not what Jesus would do. And I fire back and say, you're not a Bible reader. You never studied your Bible. Tracy doesn't ever rebuke me. Because she knows, you know what? That's exactly what Jesus did. That's exactly what the apostles did. You're the fool. And in 1 John 3.13, marvel not. So there's a whole realm of comic books out there called Marvel. Some Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, Caveman, Water Woman, and they don't know how to wear their underwear. And they have no power against the power of God. Marvel not, my brethren, okay? We are the brethren. We are gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the children of God. That's us. So what's it say? Marvel not, my brethren, in the world hate you. So what's the world say? Hate is an ugly word. Not to hate that, that, that person in their sin. You're not to hate that person over there, what they do, what they believe. You're not to hate it. And if these people believe in this, you're not to hate that. We're not to judge. Judge not, lest you be judged. I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. You ought to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. If you don't, you're going to hell. Shut up. Don't judge me. Now, one, what you're reading. There's a man over here telling us about Jesus. Shut him up. Well, wait a minute, you're not, you're not practicing what you preach. Why do you hate Jesus? Why is it, we've seen all, I've seen all kinds of vendors in my life. Tracy's seen vendors, the food trucks, you've seen the hot dog man, you've seen the ice cream man, you've seen people peddling one. And when these people grow up, you never see anybody with those people say, Hail Satan! Satan rules! Satan loves me! Never! But when you stand up for the Word of God, you stand up for the Bible, all of a sudden, there's hatred. You will go to your grave, Lord willing, or you will go in the rapture, Lord willing, with the world hating you once you become a Christian. And this is not a good popular message for worldly Christians in, the, in these glass pulpit churches and you know all kinds of recreation and let's get the world involved in all that. The world don't hate that church if something wrong because John, the writer of the Gospel of John, who told us, marvel not, my brother, the world hates you. And the world likes you, the world loves you, the world... You need to get down and find out where you stand in Christ. Marvel not, my brother, the world hates you. Mark 15, 13. Gospel of Mark. You know, we're going to take abuse down here. And Fox's Book of Martyrs, the story of the Christian, Christian, the Bible-believing Christians, have been tortured for the Word of God, for Jesus. Stands throughout all that. The world hates you. I think we, we can close on the subject right now, but we're not going to. But we can close it right now. Just three scriptures. The world hates us. But do you realize we're going to a place where everyone's going to love everybody? Amen. Those that really hate are going to hell. I'm trying to think what I said the other day. I was doing a message. Do you realize all the ones that stood at the cross of Jesus were the ones that hated him? Only one disciple out of twelve were there. The women were there. But no one ever honored Jesus on that cross. No one ever sang any hymns to Jesus on that cross. All the people who were healed weren't there. They weren't there. The people who were fed weren't there. And so when they buried his body, Joseph's army and Nicodemus craved that body and put it in the tomb and buried it. 
on the third day, Sunday morning, they didn't come to see the resurrection. They came to, to, to uh, wrap up the dead body of Jesus. Even his disciples are up in the upper room. They're not looking for the resurrection. He told them, to listen, three days, three nights, as a sign of Jonas, I'm coming out. No one was there for him. The entire world that supposedly loves Christians and loves me as a Christian stood there at the cross when those that were, should have been there mocking God on that cross. Come on, if, if, if you are of God, but God, come on, come on down, we'll believe you. Mark chapter 15, verse 13. And they cried out again, Crucify him! And then Pilate said to them, Why? What evil have he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him! Isn't that kind of bigotry? It was open knowledge of Jerusalem and in Israel, in the outer towns of the world, and probably amongst the Roman soldiers, that here is Jesus, the one that is able to heal, the one that is just all love. You can't say nothing bad about Jesus. And when he comes to the end of his ministry, they gave him the pulpit. They gave him the honorary degree. No, his people cried out, crucify him. He came unto his own, we studied and they received him not. They said, give him that cross. What about Barabbas? We'll take Barabbas with us. It's kind of interesting. Because the one that was sinless perfection, that did the works of righteousness, they said, we don't want. The world hates Jesus. Luke chapter 23, 21. You know what stands you out? You know what mark your... And if you ever get in doubt, and it happens, I have. Mark, I mean, Luke 23, 21. If you ever say, you know, what about my salvation? It might really say, and it happens. Sit back, write down the many blessings, name them one by one. And then recall, do you truthfully and honestly love the Lord? And then you look at other people around you, people you know, people who Do they love the Lord? And if your answer, yes, I love the Lord with all my heart, and I, I'm trying to be them, and you look at the people around you, they don't, they claim, but they don't, and you still have that love, that spark in your heart, from you're saved. Because if you don't, marvel not if the world hates you, guess where you stand. And if a Christian, and people don't like this, if a Christian or a person professes to be a Christian and does not honor God, now I can't judge salvation, but James says, faith without works is dead. If you tell me you're, you are saved, you're a Christian, and you don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, look at the verses we're reading today. I don't like when people mock their wives, or wives mock their husbands. I hate it. I don't even like the jokes. I'm not going to brag about myself, but if you want to talk to my wife, she got a wonderful testimony about her husband while she was unconscious. Why? Because I love her. Aww. What about Mrs. And I saw the name, I don't remember what the name was, that sat in the room next to her in the bed. I didn't do nothing for her. I don't even remember her name. And I saw her notebook there right next to the tree. I don't know about the person over there, and I don't know about... I don't remember Tracy's names of the doctors that took care of her in therapy. But I know Tracy. And I know the nurses know how much he loves me. So, Aww. okay, I love Tracy. And if I ever said, you know, that one, one day, you know, how do I care about Tracy? I want to do things for her. I want to make her please. I'm not buying her love, but I want to make her happy. I want to, you know. And if you do that for Christ, I mean, if you're lying... I don't want to raise up Tracy, but I've, talked, I've been told, tell things you know. When you're writing a book, write a book about things you know. When you're going to serve the Lord, you're going to preach the word, do things that you know. When you're in aggravated pain, and you still can hand them a gospel track with a smile, 
It's not phony. And I mean, if you can sit in the same hospital room, can't wait to get out, and you get out, and you go start smoking cigarettes, you go start drinking beers and hanging out with the world, uh, something wrong. But look at, again, verily, verily, Luke 23, 21, but they cried out saying, crucify him, crucify him. This is so important, it's recorded twice. How many times is the birth of Jesus recorded in the Bible? Once. And yet we see this rejection of the Jewish people, of the Jewish Messiah. You would think that here's all the celebration, here's all the feast days looking to the Messiah coming. The prophecy. Isaiah spoke about that virgin birth. Uh, the, 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 he's going to conquer Satan, the, the one who's trying to destroy the nation. He's going to come and each of the feasts, the Passover, behold the Lamb of God. That Passover was to prove that here comes a Lamb of God that Abraham said, my son God shall provide himself the Lamb. And when you come to the end of 33 and a half years, nobody can say anything about you without lying. And there are people in the background of your life that have been truly healed. And we dealt with a, with a healing guy in the, in the hospital and all that, to, to vain. And the population says, crucify him. So, as the world would be, it would not be surprising as a family anywhere, you go to your public ministry, if we were to go to the farmer's market, and somebody would shoot us, somebody would kill us with a sword, and somebody would do something to kill us, it would not be surprising to have most of the people at the farmer's market get up and go. Now, some would love us, some would cry, some would... But the world. And when you read Fox's Book of Mars about what has happened to the Christians, there were, mad, there were people who would show up, we're going to burn a Christian today in the faggots, and that's the wood that you would put them on the burden. We're going to torture this Christian and it would be people there. Listen, that big Roman Colosseum that's empty today that visitors go and visit. They have fed Christians to the lions, to the bears, and every animal, and the gladiators in that Colosseum. It was a national event. You got your ticket, here to see, get your popcorn, get your hoo hoo, your flag, and stuff like that. And we're number one while they watch Christians get tortured. And then you're going to have to wake up to God is love. We all love Jesus. No. John 19, 6. And you got to face reality. The day I got saved was Saturday afternoon, April 25th, 1987. I went to church the next day, Sunday. I told everybody, stood up. Hey, I just got saved. I went home that day, started telling my father about hell. They said I needed to be baptized. That next week I was baptized. I started coming out to Wednesday services. Hey, this is what a Christian is supposed to do. I want to learn. I thirst. I desire the word of God. I started doing things that were weird to the church. I was going out telling people about Jesus. After I learned what gospel tracts were to be for, I used them properly. And then I started realizing, like, I look around, like, where's, where's my church? They're gone. They're gone. I became an oddball. And even today, I don't know how many years it's been since 1987, my family, who are saved, came from the same church that I was saved out of, look at me today like you're a freak. Jesus is the reason for the season. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. No, let me tell you. No, Jesus was not born during that season. It's Tammuz. It's a fallen God. Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus. I'm sorry to tell you, dogs don't go to heaven. Stop witnessing to your dog. He's not going to get saved. Go tell people. About that preacher you listen to, he has a perverted Bible. He has a perverted message. 
well, who do you think you are? I'm the same person you are. I got the same Bible. Why did you change? Why have I become your enemy? And Paul writes to one of the churches, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You will have Christians that will come and stab you in the back with the world. But when we get to heaven, I may get a I may, I don't know, I may get a crown and they will not. Christ will reward you. And when Paul is on the road to Damascus and, and Jesus says to Paul, whom thou persecuted, the Christians, Paul never persecuted Jesus Christ. Never. He can't. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now, has been, until he comes. When you are persecuted, when you are hated as a Christian, reflect on this. Christ takes it personal. And everybody that comes to you and badmouths you, everybody who talks against you, everybody who, who gives you a fight, everybody that gives you aggravation, anybody gives you because you want to do right, they're going to face Jesus and Jesus said, what did you do that to me for? I didn't do it to you. Oh, yes, you did. You know, as a little child, a few things times in my life, I'll get my dad, I'll get my big brother. I remember doing that many times. There'll be one time, I'll get God. And God will step up the plate and say, and how bad was his preaching? He was too loud? Guess who gave him that loudness? Shall I call his mother who's saved and say, Mrs. Hayward, remember that son that aggravated you with that loud voice entire life? He used it for me, didn't he? Yes. They hate my voice. Even worse without the amplification. That couldn't stop them. Couldn't stop me with the Lord. John chapter 19, verse 6. When the chief priest, that is the high priest, that's the priest in charge. They are of Aaron. God set that up. We're not going to look at the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. God set up these priests. Not in the church age, during the, 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 the time of Israel. In the Old Testament, God says, I will have one group of people, Levi, of the twelve tribes of Israel. I am going to set them up. They're going to be their spokesmen for the people to me. They're going to be the mediators. Christ is our mediator today, no priest. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto him, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Alright, here comes an Israelite. He's got his he's got his, his sheep. He's got his lamb. I've sinned. This is my offering. And they were the priest, they would lay their hands on the horn that the person would kill that sheep right in front of the priest, and that priest would cut it up like he needs to do and put it on the altar. Once a year, the day of atonement, that priest would go in the most holy place twice. For the atonement of the children of Israel of God. For the priest himself and for the people. That's what the law. The only access they have to God is through the priests. And those very same priests, at this time, approximately 33 AD, they're the ones taking God and crucifying him. So don't get upset when your car has got bumper stickers and the pastor of the church and the deacon come up to you, can you move that car? We got visitors coming. Not going to move it? Can I have the key? Don't get upset when you skip church on Sunday morning to go witness to 2,000, 3,000 people mm -hmm. as they go to a, to a race. Well, don't come here no more. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't know your religious service was the most ultimate religious service, yet you had that one temple that all the children of Israel would go to. Bible says we're two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am. Amen. And we're getting we're with three or four people. We're there gathered together to get the gospel out to lost people. I think God's more there than your stupid photocopy of your lesson. And then you tell us you're not going to have anybody in this pulpit that does not have a King James Bible and you have another Bible brought in and then you rebuke me. Are we all Christians? You're mad at me because I went and found out and, and searched about a modern Bible being used in a pulpit. So I'm telling you, it's marvel not if, if the world 
will hate you. And then there are Christians. Because Jesus said, I speak to the world evil. I tell the world that that's not right. We tell the world, we're living. Holy than thou is what they call it. No. I'm just trying to do what the Bible tells me to do. Christian. Well, we go to the same church. Yeah, but you're, you're not studying reading the Bible. You're not trying to be approved of God. You're trying to be approved of somebody else. You're trying to get that recognition. I'm trying to memorize scripture verses like when I come to get somebody, I can use that scripture correctly and properly and not misquote it. You're trying to do that scripture so you can get the Tootsie Roll. Okay? I'm going out telling the world preaching the, the gospel because God says go to all the world and preach the gospel because that's how I would say you're going out because your favorite group that you like are doing it. So people can pat you on the back and you get it next Sunday. Well, Mr. Smith went with us. And... No. Wait till we get the acknowledgement from Jesus Christ himself. Wait till Jesus Christ said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Those are words that are going to ring in your ear for all eternity. Because he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. There's a crown on your head you're going to get for eternity. And when you step up and you say, and you go before the judgment seat of Christ, you stand before Jesus and what do I get? Use your tootsie roll rock. Burns up. That's paper, isn't it? Wood, hay, or stubble burns up. You didn't memorize that scripture because you wanted to for my honor and glory. You wanted the class to see you. You wanted that candy. You wanted that free Bible that you already have a Bible, which I could never understand. If you get ribbons, you can get a free Bible, but if you already have a Bible, uh, you got something else that you can leave in the car or put on the shelf this Sunday and blow off the dust. And I can tell you stories about Bibles. But. So, that's John chapter 19, verse 6, verse 15. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And before we finish that verse, you ask Rachel, all the public ministry, as far as I know, how old she was. I guarantee she's heard many times people saying, hey, get out of here, go. Call the cops. Leave. We don't want you here. Go. No. Very few times she's ever heard her dad think, hey, I want you to come preach before our church. We never heard that. Never heard anybody say, hey, you know what? We enjoy what you do. And when you come to our church and tell us what you do and how you do and tell us why your family. No. Get out of here. And that's what they told you, Jesus. That church hate that. Uh, that church is rejecting me and my family. Oh, Jesus, they rejected me. Well, guess what? So did, so did my people. What's the big deal? But doesn't everybody love Jesus? You need to study your Bible a little more. No, they don't. If the Christians rejected you, now get this, get to get this. If the Christians rejected you, the Jewish people rejected me. That's kind of interesting. If you finish verse 15. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? Capital K. The chief priest answered, Those are the priests of the priests. We have no king but Caesar. Idiot, that's him right there. You have fallen to the world. The world is Caesar. That K, capital, and king, that's God right there. You know what you just said? We want the world, not God. Give me the world and leave Jesus. If that's their hand. That's sorry, but that's a fact of life found in the Bible. Acts 12, too. You know what they did in the Old Testament? It is spoken by Jesus and by, by the prophets. They killed the prophets. They put, in, they put Jeremiah in jail. It's mud in one other place. Elijah ran off and had a uh, uh, nervous breakdown. A prophet of God, a man of God, ran from a woman. Jezebel. Jezebel. Oh. Don't think you're as a mighty Christian that none of that's going to happen. It's, it affected me. I look at those people I'm preaching to and I, I, my heart breaks. I because I know where they're going. 
I know what's going to happen. If the Bible's correct, they don't. You don't have to shed physical tears for them. When your heart breaks, I mean, it's almost like sometimes, you yeah, just say this prayer. But that ain't going to work. You know, when you say, all right, I'll just say this prayer with me. You know, you got saved, and, you know, we don't want to go. You're going with the world because that's not what the Bible says. You have good intentions, but they fail. In Acts chapter 12, verse 2. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. That's Herod. Mm -hmm. We have no king but, but, but Caesar. That, that's the Roman government. They killed James. Mm -hmm. Peter, James, and John. That's that same James. Where James, John, and Peter saw more of what the other disciples saw, James was killed with a sword. Now watch. Now watch. People are going to love me as a minister. Because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. <laughs> they made the Jews happy. Me killed James. Go get Peter. I'm going to make the Jews really happy with me. Man, where's the Jewish people? He came on his own, his own received them not. What about his disciples? They went out to, to them and they received them not either. And there's going to be a lot of times I have seen personally that God will move you from your hometown. Because the people you grew up are not going to, they know you too much. My mom won't listen to me. My dad won't listen to me because they know you. Growing up, they know the sinner you are. And how dare you grow up and tell us that we, I mean, when you go up and tell your parents nicely and properly, say, you know, Christmas is wrong. I'm not going to raise my children up like that in the Easter Bunny, but when they brought you up like that and you tell them, say, listen, now they got you telling us we're wrong. No. I'm telling you what is wrong. I'm a Christian now. I believe the Bible. Well, you can take the Jesus and get out of here. You can take all that, that, that belief you have because we're doing it right. And when Jesus tells the world that it's not Easter, it's Esther. It's not Christmas. It's a pagan, a pagan holiday. Your church is not correct. There is a hell. God created, and I can go on with all the things. They're going to look at you like, well, who do you think you are? You know? Didn't we go to that grocery store that time and steal the candy? Didn't we steal the gum? Didn't we look at the, those magazines we shared? And you're going to tell me you're the holy ruler. Now, see, your life now is condemned theirs. Jesus has condemned theirs. And when we go to them and say, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, I just gave you a serious boot in whatever you believe. That you are not going to make it without Jesus Christ. And that, that angers them because Jesus is the way. That angers them with you because you are telling them what to do. And they say, yeah, I almost drowned. They say when a person drowned, I have learned and, and I've spoken to people, you don't save them right away. They'll kick, they'll, they'll holler, they'll bring you down. Mm -hmm. You gotta wait for them to get tired out. You gotta wait for them so they're not fighting. Then you can grab them or, or throw them something and you can pull them out. Mm -hmm. When they're kicking and angry against Jesus Christ, nothing's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. That's the world. You gotta wait for them to calm down. But when you go into living the life of Christ and you think you're going to be humpy dory and everybody's going to love you, you're going to be for a big shot. Now, um, now, let me also speak on this. You're going to have plenty of people who are, they're going to marvel you. you you're going to, uh, like I said, I can only speak what just happened recently. When Tracy's in the hospital, she, she smiled over at everything like a popsicle and stuff like that. But when I knelt down to her, I said, I said Tracy, there are people in Europe praying for you. I don't even know where they are. She, she gets this smile. There's people all over the world. I said, Tracy, this woman from church came and visited you. She smiled. This woman is coming from church to visit. She smiled. All right, those are Christians that love the Lord and want to do right. Those are the disciples of Jesus Christ. But you're not going to get many of them. You'll get some. But there's only one that says, I'll never leave you of safety. 
And when you've got trials and tribulations, which I have had in my life, and you know, you, your flesh is pulling your hair out. But when you're... And I can't explain it. I guess it's only because the Holy Spirit is there amongst your turmoil of your life. You can just sit there, you know what? I'm afraid, I'm scared, I'm frightened, but i got peace. Jesus is going to take care of me. I don't know how. But He's going to take care of me. I wish He'd tell me how. And the world just makes it worse. If you do this, if you do that, my opinion, this opinion, they only make it worse. So the fact is that the world hates Jesus Christ. There are people who are going to hate you for living right. And there will be people who will be by your side with the Lord. But right. remember the one that said, I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. Amen. And I'll tell you, we went through that. I'm not preaching in the woods on this one. And Lord God, we thank you that you're a faithful God. Lord God, that I put my faith and belief and trust in what you've done, not what I've done. That Lord, any moment, that that trump would blow, we would go. At any moment, Lord, if I take my last breath, I'd go to a place of glory. And Lord, just thank you for reassuring me with Tracy, Lord, that she has that same hope. She has that same faith that I share. And Lord God, just for Jesus Christ's sake, I, I thank you and give you the glory before my brethren. I thank you for more with Tracy, Lord God, my help me. Help her, Lord God. Help her kingdom. Yes, help Lord, everything, Lord God. Lord. Lord God, it's a miracle that you pulled her out of that, of that, that, that breathing yes, thing. Yes, Lord. And I, I'm unworthy to ask for more miracles of complete healing. But Lord, if I may ask for healing enough to keep her going more, that Lord, in some way, somehow, if it's not the rapture, Lord, that Trace and I can go together. For Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. 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 Yeah.